Okay, so we have painted our um, all of our wooden pieces for the intermediate uh, Louise Nevelson inspired wood relief sculpture. If you were like me and the other day you were using the transparent white, the transparent white barely, as you can see in this example, it barely covered the wood. And then I tried, um, not on film, but I tried on my own, to use another white tempera, and you can see that here. And it's just a normal, everyday, what you could buy at the store, uh, white tempera paint. And you can see it also had trouble covering the wood that we're working with. The best um, coverage that I found is by using the art tempera that I've ordered, the Blick white tempera. That's what I'm choosing to use. Um, at the library, I actually have um, black and then I have other colors for you to choose from. So remember, um, most of Louise Nevelson pieces were black or white, they were monochromatic, and that helped her play with her light and shadow and, and use the, um, look at the texture and shapes more. If you are choosing not to use the white or black, then you um, have some other of the art blick that you can choose from uh, if you're doing a solid color. Just know that if you're using um, any kind of temper on your own or the colorations that the coverage of your wood is going to be very uh, transparent. So now that we have painted our pieces and um, hopefully you have been able to go back and you haven't had to do um, the multiple layers that I've had to do. We're going to now build our piece, just making sure that we know where everything still belongs. Remember a relief sculpture is a piece that you are looking down at. In, the sculpture is raised up off of a flat surface. And so in history, we could see relief sculptures in um, early forms of communication like the hieroglyphs, um, the, the different um, etchings and carvings into a flat stone and then leaving the raised uh, art surface above it. So that's what we're doing. Uh, doing We are lifting up off of a flat surface and creating an interesting design with texture, repetition, pattern. Okay, you see what I've done to be able to have all my little pieces drying? I have stuff all over the place. So I'm building, this is my, this is my base of my design. If you um, are not using white like me, if you've chosen black, then you need to paint this foam core black before you start. If you've chosen red, um, if you're gonna do your relief sculpture all in red, you need to paint this red first, especially if you're gonna have the bottom base layer shown when hanging or sitting. So I'm going to start with my glue. Yay, we're finally adhering with glue. So this is glue all. It's a multi-purpose glue. It is super wonderful. Um, it has a strong bond and it dries pretty quick. So 
Um, it's not always instant like hot glue. Some things take a while to dry, but it is just um, good for what we're dealing with with our foam core and our balsa and our different types of wood dowels. So I am going to use a little bit more of this because we are creating a structure. Um, so you're not going to hear me say just a dot, not a lot. Um, I'm actually going to place a decent amount of glue to this so that it has multiple bonding points to the foam core. And I put it upside down. I actually painted the top part of this because I knew it would be visible. And so I have to turn my piece around. And I'm just gonna start one piece at a time, starting from the bottom and working my way up. The foam core that you have available to you is not perfectly cut, um, but it is mostly going to be square, so you can fit your lines to the lines of the edges of your piece. And so I have these two pieces so far, and once again, the bond is not instantaneous. It's not an instant bond. So that just moved on me. That's okay. I'm not gonna move this around as much. But you can see that this is my starting point. And um, this probably needs to be left to dry and you can do this in parts or sections as you go. That is gonna be up to you um, and works best for your schedule. And it definitely needs to be drying flat. We are raising the relief off of this foam core but it needs to be able to dry flat to the foam core. If you have pieces that are touching each other, like for example, um, this rectangular prism is about to go in this opening space, it needs to be glued to this, this, and the bottom. So I'm just going to add glue on two of the sides and then the bottom. And, you know, your fingers might get a little sticky, a little gluey, you know, that's just part of this. If that really bothers you, you can just wipe it on your work apron or wipe it on your work covering surface. You can go wash your hands, but I typically don't wash my hands until I'm finished because if I'm using glue, I'm just gonna, going to continue with the sticky. So now I have some of my different dowels that I've used and I'm ready to add. Remember, we're working from the bottom up, so I'm doing everything on this lower level first. And in my idea, remember we didn't sketch this out, but in my idea, some of my pieces are slightly coming off the edge. And now 
of this piece is going to, and I know it's hard to see, but that is not perfectly flat. It's going to be glued here at this point and then glued down here at this point. So there's going to be light and space in that part. As you continue to add some of these layers as you're building up, you're definitely going to have to let it lay still and flat. You're not going to be able to continue to move that around. Start getting some of my other pieces over here. This is an example of one of my um, dowels where I have that transparent paint that I couldn't get a full coverage on. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my upper la layer We talked about maybe you not remembering your design because this was not a piece that we sketched. Um, and so if you took a moment to uh, take a picture, make sure you're referring back to that picture. If you took a quick uh, moment to um, sketch it, then refer back to that sketch. Make sure you're getting your pieces put back where they belong. When I first discovered Louise Nevelson, I fell in love with um, some of the shapes that I was seeing that she was uh, creating with and using. Um, I saw those and it just instantly brought back memories I can't necessarily tell you what the memories are of. I just knew that whenever I looked at her pieces, simple as they may seem, in our eyes, it brought back memories of um, parts of my childhood and past. And that's the amazing thing about art. That is why people create. People create to express themselves, um, to continue 
um, memories of the past to hold on to different times and I love that about her pieces. In her pieces you'll see that she has taken found objects. I'm sure they were very deliberate in her mind um, but when we look at them they, they just look like found objects and she has recycled them, reclaimed them, reused them to create these large sculptures. So just very interesting and amazing to me. And that's what we're trying to create. We're not copying but we're using that as an inspiration to create something that has maybe that same feeling or mindset. So I'm starting, I have um, pieces that are glued down. I have a couple that I had to go back with my butter white paint. And now I'm taking a few moments to place some of my other pieces. Remember, you can overlap, you can build on top. Um, I could overlap these two pieces and see how the color and light and shadow play off of each other. Um, I could use this to fill a space that I feel is maybe lacking. And at this point, you can move some of the parts around and see what you like the best. And how maybe some of the pieces are working together. And then once you find where you want these pieces, go ahead and take a moment and glue them down. Remember if they're touching something else, you'll want to get them adhered to that part as well.
stop and take a minute. You don't want to hold it straight up because you have pieces that are still being bonded. But hold it up, look at it. You could stand up and, and look down, bird's eye view, down and see how your different pieces are looking. Take some time to keep your piece in a safe place and let it dry. You can always come back and add more to it if you find that there are some areas that need more detail or more definition. Um, if you have pieces that you haven't used and um, you thought maybe you would be using them and they're just not working in your design, then you can leave them over to the side and maybe use them for another piece that you're gonna create at another time. Stop for a moment and look at your piece so far. What a beautiful relief sculpture that is based on the life works of Louise Nevelson um, working with um, use of your space, texture, different textures that you have, patterns, um, creating interesting, a unified space, and then using the, the light and the shadow to add interest. When I look at this piece, and I don't feel like it's finished yet. I like to tinker with my pieces for a while. But when I look at this piece, I absolutely love the imperfection of the lines and the gaps because those lines and gaps show the shadows and the light. And I love that about the pieces whenever I look at um, her work. So continue to let your piece dry flat so that all of the wood areas are bonded and then later on on a bonus video I'll um, make sure that your piece is complete and we'll add a hanger to the back so that you could hang this.